Hello everyone. Don't worry about these ominous numbers here. Worry about these ominous numbers instead, since they're the focus of this video. So it's been around two years since I gave Math any autistic levels of attention, but I figured it'd be best if I publish this discovery in some capacity before my mental faculties decline too hard, apparently. As is, I can barely remember where this method even applies, but let's try our best to decipher whatever it is 15-year-old me figured out. 15-year-old me only saw it fit to leave two examples, it looks like, so that's what we're getting. Basically, it looks like this applies wherever a graph recurves, such as in an absolute value or exponential inequality, where only one variable is involved. In other words, this method applies to inequalities featuring a single variable for which two distinct values can result in the same output. So I've been recording for a few hours now, and therefore the lighting is a little worse now since I was mostly relying on natural lighting, which is mostly now gone. And now I have to rely on the lamp on my desk instead since the lights in my room don't work. I also brought the camera a little closer to the board so that the numbers can be seen. At least I hope that's the case. They might still appear a little small, fortunately, but hopefully that's not too big of an issue. So take as examples these two inequalities. For which values of x do they hold true? Well, if you asked me to solve these the regular way, I wouldn't know because I don't remember how to solve these the regular way, if I'm being honest. However, what we can do is use my method, and I'm going to start with this problem here. So I am going to apply a plus or minus sign in order to undo the absolute value here. Now. When you do this, though, make sure to change the operator, like so, ensuring that the original inequality operator is maintained as the top. And then you can just proceed as per usual. And whenever you apply a negative operation, you swap the operators. So if we solve this, we can proceed using, I'm trying to remember, uh, it's going to be negative 4 plus or minus 20, like so. So we isolate x, and now here's what happens. We compute the two ranges for which this is true. When we use the plus sign in the plus or minus operator, we use the top inequality operator. So in this case, you get 16, right? Negative 4 plus 20 being 16 is greater than x. Or when you use the minus sign, you use the bottom operator. So in this case, negative 4 minus 20 will get you negative 24 less than x. Right. And so from here, you just apply logic to see if you can merge these two ranges like so. Right, negative 24 less than x um, less than 16. And this is the solution because these two ranges obviously can be merged. In some cases, they are mutually exclusive and they can't be merged. But in this case, they can. And if we check here, you can see that I already had that ready, right? But at twenty, at negative twenty-four, this graph is at sixteen. The scaling is a little off. Oh, twenty actually, not sixteen. But at negative twenty-four, it's right at twenty. So we keep going. All of a sudden, this is going to be. False, right? So this is the range in which it is bounded, right, right there. And so only for this range is this true, which is solved 
like so. And so now I'm just going to go with the other example, right? In this case, you have a parabola, which I scaled a little strange, just the regular x squared graph. And so applying the same operation, actually, let me check. Right, so you can take the square root of x, you can apply a square root operation here, which will get you x as less than or greater than but also equal to, I don't know, whatever that thing is, plus or minus 4, right? Because a square root can have two answers. And so you get x is less than or greater than or equal to plus or minus 4. And it's the same process. In this case, you're going to use the top operator. That's not the top operator. You're going to use the top operator with the positive and the negative and the bottom operator with the negative. And so you check can these two ranges be merged, right? So x has to be less than or equal to four, so here, and x has to be greater than or equal to four. So it's going to be this range here. So yes, you can you can uh, merge these like so. Right. And if you check here, right, less than or equal to 16, which is going to be around there, right, and that is correct. Now my graphs aren't drawn exactly very perfectly, but, and that line is a bit crooked, but that's the general gist of it. I hope that wasn't too confusing. I'm not sure if this method works under all circumstances or why it works at all. And I'm fairly certain I'm not the first to have stumbled upon this trick. So if you feel you have a better way of explaining it, then feel free to do so. As always, thanks for watching.